Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting. May I have a motion to go into closed session? As permitted by Section 3-305B of the General Provisions Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, I move that we go into session to discuss personnel, administrative, and to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice regarding personnel matters, pending litigation, and board appeals. I May I have a second? A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. The ayes have it. We will return at 6 p.m. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for citizens to review on Q Q QAC TV, Channel 7, a local cable <coughs> station. The agenda is on the information table right inside the doorway. During this meeting, we ask that you turn off your cell phones and hold personal conversations outside of the meeting room. We will now be led by the Pledge of Allegiance uh, by Annette DiMaggio, our president. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let's see, okay, this is where I'm going to do it. I need to make a motion to amend. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to move 2.03 to 8.06. So moved. Second. May I have a motion to approve no, the... No, you have a motion and a second. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> we have a motion and a second. Do I do the... Okay, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. <laughs> the ayes have it. Approval of the minutes for, I need a motion for the approval of the minutes for the October 4th and October 18th. So moved. Open and closed. Open and closed. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have. <coughs> At this time, uh, board members, would you like to highlight any of your community involvement over the past month? Sharon, do you want to start with you? Sure. I was able to attend <coughs> the Brook Free Coalition Town Hall presented by Mr. Wright and his group at Stevensville Middle. It was an excellent presentation, a great night, lots of um, hands-on community things that, I mean, things that the community could involve themselves in. They had the trailer there set up as a, as a uh, child's bedroom. They had law enforcement there. Um, we had some of our school volunteers there providing food. They went around the community and got all kinds of community support for giveaways and, and food, and it was a huge undertaking on their part, and everyone came through for them. Um, it was very successful. Um, we'd like to see this done again. It's the second time I've been able to attend it. Um, if we could do it more often, that would be great, but I know it's a big undertaking for, for Warren. But um, we had good school involvement, and it was a very memorable night. Um, I was able to also attend Hispanic Heritage Night um, at Sudlersville Middle School. Again, a great presentation. I was able to attend that last year as well, and it just improves every year. Um, the school does a great job. Ms. DiMaggio is involved in it. She does a great job. And it's a real nice... Um, support system and recognition for our um, Hispanic organizations in the community. I was able to attend Lights On After School Partnering for Youth program at Churchill Elementary last week. That was fun. Um, you get to see what the kids do after <coughs> school and how they interact with the community. And I also was able to fortunately attend my first Teacher of the Year Gala in Baltimore. And it just shows what amazing educators we have in this state. Um, 
this county as well. It's, it's just phenomenal. Um, illness kept me away from two very important events for the community, but mm, life gets in the way sometimes. Thanks. You're always a hard act to follow. Um, I attended the um, Queens County High School Hall of Fame induction dinner. Uh, that was a fun night. And also the Centerville Middle School uh, Fall Festival um, where the band performed. And um, in two weeks, I'll be spending a week at North Bay with the Centerville Middle School students. <laughs> fun for you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I also attended the uh, Hall of Fame Sports Awards Banquet, uh, which was a wonderful evening. It's nice to be able to recognize their past um, sports members. And I'm so glad that we were able to uh, get uh, Dave Cooper oh, yes, <laughs> because um, he has for years would not um, – be, he did not want to be recognized for an award, um, and this year they got him. So, um, and also the Hispanic Heritage, uh, which was wonderful. And on this Saturday we have uh, Make a Difference Day at Sellersville Middle School that starts at 9 a.m. ends at 1:30. This is for our um, homeless population, our elderly population. Um, so, if you know of anyone that would like to uh, join us, please let them know. Beverly? Um, I also got to attend the Teacher of the Year Gala um, with uh, Ms. Harlow, and we think we like our representative, Marsha, Marsha McNeil. She's a math teacher at Centerville Middle. And um, it was great to have her there and the other, uh, all the other people that attended. It was, it was wonderful. And we, we missed the superintendent. She had some car trouble, which was <coughs> terrible because everyone missed her very much. And so um, it was a great event. Sorry, you had to miss that one. <coughs> On the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, I also attended the, um, uh, the Unity, D Unity Day activities <coughs> in the, cent the Centerville area. Did, uh, do, did Ken Island area last year. Did Centerville area this year. Another uh, outstanding event. And... Um, it's really well received by the students, and it's it's just was terrific to have um, some of the Centerville, including the Queen Anne's County High School cheerleaders. I was able to, to be with them, and then there was a, a nice luncheon, and I got to see the, the Ken Island group and all the characters and all that had been down at Ken Island. So, I mean, and that was just a really great event, and I'm so happy we did it again this year, and it, it's just one of those events that the, uh, st the students really enjoy it, the teachers too, and I think it's beneficial for them. We should do that every year. Um, <coughs> the, the last thing was the, the legislative um, committee I sit on with Mae. Um, I went to a short meeting they had at the conference at, um, the next morning after our last meeting, and also we had another one. Um, and basically the largest, large meeting we had, we had, uh, most of it was dedicated to a discussion by Dr. Kerwin. Um, he is, um, it was an overview of the Commission on Innovation and Excellence in Education. <coughs> he is called the Kerwin Commission as he's the chairman of that. Um, most of the overview was discussed about the process they used. We were a little disappointed. They didn't talk about the financial side, which is really the biggest part of what they were hired on to do. We wanted him to talk about the potential changes to the funding coming down. And you all have probably read um, Talbert Rose's letter. He is um, a, a member of, I believe, Caroline County Board, and he um, is also active on the MAB legislation. Um, and he wrote about how MAB, and also MAB, which is the Maryland Association of Boards of Ed, and the PAZAM, which is the Public School Superintendents Association, they're pushing for significant funding increases. Um, we are urging the commission to uh, address, and I'll quote what he said, the adequacy sta studies overarching conclusion that there is an enormous statewide funding gap. We need this committee to realize, well, to pr pr present that because it's coming up in, in everything they're doing, but they aren't talking about it right now. They're, they're, um, I think they're politically trying to figure out what they should be saying in reference to that. Maybe, uh, MABE also posted, has posted legislation positions on their website. 
Um, if you all would please look them over, let me know if you have, disagree with any of them. They're the legislative priorities that they're going to push for uh, for the next General Assembly um, starting in January. Uh, support, uh, the, mainly it's, it's uh, five key things, support for continued governance autonomy for the local boards. We always push for that. Opposition to any unfunded mandates. We're still pushing for those and watching out for those. Support for full state funding for the Maryland schools and support for robust state funding for school construction and renovation projects. And also supporting sustained local government investments in education. So those are the kind of the 200,000 foot view of what we're doing and there's on the website you can read them individually and it talks about the bills that we expect to come forward that we want to go for and against. The next meeting I have in about a, uh, I think the 12th of, Dece of November we are going to be voting as um, the 24 districts on supporting these or not supporting these. So please read them over. Let me know if you have any objections to them because I'm representing our county in those votes. That's all. Dr. King, would you like to share any events? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I really was sad to miss the Teacher of the Year Gala. I was probably about 3.4 miles away <laughs> on the side of the road on 695 waiting for a tow truck. But I, I know that uh, I have a, a trusty colleague who took care of all of that. Thank you, Mr. Paluski, <laughs> and escorted our Teacher of the Year, Mrs. McNeil, down the, the walkway. And, and thank you for, for supporting me in that. Um, also attended the Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Night, which was wonderful, of course, my first one. And uh, special thanks to that entire community and to you as well, Mr. Maggio. And I know I'm going to pronounce her name incorrectly, Miss Maria. Maria uh, who was, Yes, thank you. It was <laughs> fabulous and, and wonderful in, in supporting that event. So that was great. Uh, PFY um, at Graysonville was able to attend that, and that was wonderful. We had a few elected officials there and uh, Queen Anne's County High School, the Hall of Fame Awards. I was blessed to be able to be there and meet so many wonderful alum and uh, athletes, former athletes. We presented, uh, Ms. Pullen, myself, and uh, Mr. Pender presented our request for a construction budget to the governor the last uh, two weeks ago and when we missed the work session, as well as the Board of Public Works, and uh, that was received well. We will have more rounds to go, and so we'll keep everyone posted on that. We're hoping for full funding. We also have been doing school monitoring visits. So Mr. Paluski, uh, Ms. Pauls, and the fabulous supervisors for curriculum and instruction have been there to support our work in that. We've been able to get around to, I believe, uh, it may be 14. I think I've met with each of the uh, principals to offer our thanks and recognition of National Principals Month. So we have one more, and those are posted on the website. So thank you to Dr. Pearson and to <coughs> Mr. Strait for supporting <coughs> us and organizing that for our principals. Um, also had an opportunity to uh, visit with our principals and, and formulate their SLOs, which will direct the uh, work that we do for perf improving performance. Of course, we had a presentation to the commissioner, Ms. Uh, uh, Pullen, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Julie Allen, myself, and Mr. Paluski last week where we presented the Bridge to Excellence Master Plan. That went well. And of course, Unity Day. So my first Unity Day in Queen Anne's County, and boy, it was a blowout. It was wonderful. We had an opportunity to visit uh, several schools and uh, talk to parents and students and teachers. It was wonderful. We have the links, I believe. If they're not up on the website, they will be soon so <coughs> everyone can see some of the interviews that we had with Fox 45 because we were featured on the Hometown Hero segment. So that was wonderful. And uh, that, that pretty much does it for uh, most of, of the events that we've had in the community. But just one last thing I'd like to add is, you know, pursuant to my contract, superintendent and, of course, the Board of Education, we're required to uh, meet to establish my goals, my annual performance goals. And so that work is uh, certainly underway. And uh, we'll be able to present those goals to the public within the next couple of weeks. That's it. I would like to um, make a motion in, in that vein to uh, include 
an agenda item at our next meeting to have a superintendent present her performance goals for 2017-18 to the public. I second that. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. And next on the agenda, Mr. Peluski, do you have any, or you or anyone from the executive team like to share at this time? Sure, I would be, uh, I would be honored to. Many of the, the things that Dr. Kane has shared, certainly I've been uh, a part of that. I would say one of the biggest things which has been great has been our superintendent monitoring visits. Uh, we have visited uh, 10 schools. Uh, so we have just a few more left uh, in a whirlwind tour uh, of about a, a two and a half week period. Uh, the focus of those visits are really around three key areas. One, it gives us a chance to interact with a variety of data points with the principal and engage in their leadership team. We spend an hour walking uh, through classrooms, uh, visiting with students, talking to students, talking to teachers, and then we have an hour where the leadership team does a presentation to the superintendent and her staff uh, around where there are successes and where there are gaps in, in student learning. So we're engaging in those conversations uh, around a superintendent's vision uh, around equity and ensuring that all of our students uh, are getting the supports necessary. So those have been uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, the second thing I wanted to highlight is that our curriculum, our fabulous curriculum and instruction team, uh, we had a retreat at the community college uh, about a month ago coming up, and uh, it was great. We were doing some strategic planning on our end as it related to uh, on the capital side with textbooks, uh, materials of instruction, but we had a great one-hour lunch meeting with their counterparts, so the content folks uh, at the community college so we can build even stronger bridges. Uh, we started conversations about our dual credit and dual enrollment programs, how can we expand that? Uh, we'll be bringing back to you a conversation we've started around early college, uh, creating two early college academies at each of our high schools. So wonderful work that, that we're starting there and continuing. And the last thing is uh, the honor to attend the Teacher of the Year Gala on, on Friday with many of you. Uh, it's always great to see the support uh, behind our Teacher of the Year. Uh, the principal, the former principal, supervisors, uh, staff members, uh, it is a, it is a kudos to uh, Mrs. McNeil for her work. Thank you. Thank you. And we will now move on to the student board members. Then um, we have one very sick board member and one that couldn't make it tonight. Um, but our Kent Island High School board member did post to us. So I'm going to read what she has going on at Kent Island High School. This week is College App Application Week at Kent Island High School, November 1st. College Fair for all 10th, 11th, and 12th graders with approximately 70 colleges attending. Financial Aid Night with representatives from Chesape Chesapeake Community College at 6 p.m. Tour of Chesapeake Community College for students who are interested in attending school there. <coughs> November 2nd, they're going to have a field trip to Towson Uni University for interested students. Winter Sports Orientation, which starts at 6.30 p.m. Check, Please will open on November 3rd at 7 p.m. and show again on November 4th. Uh, at 1 and 7 p.m. and I'm taking it for granted that that is their play. Um, Ken, Island Ken Island High School cross country teams will travel to Elkton to compete in the 2A East Region cross country championship. On November 8th there will be a senior meeting about caps and gowns. November 11th Air Me Media Center is having a Barnes & Noble book fair at the Barnes & Noble store in Annapolis. November 12th Ken Island High School Varsity Volleyball, volleyball versus Y High at 5 p.m. for the section quarter final game. November 14th, our PTSA is holding a National Honor Society night on Tuesday, November 14th. Sharon? Um, at this point, we'll move into citizens participation. Jen will read the guidelines for you all. And when she's completed that, please come forward and speak, um, say your name and and tell us what you have on your mind. Thank you. Citizen participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure the appropriate, appropriate staff member responds to your questions at the, at the later date. The board respects your desire to, and right to convey your message freely, but asks as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you respect the board's request to refrain from naming citizens and name calling when offering a critique. 
At this time, I'd like to call forward Warren Wright. Hey, um, Warren, um, I'm a volunteer for the Drug Free Coalition, and I just came uh, for my two minutes to thank you guys for, we run several projects that you guys have assisted us with this last year or so. Uh, and so I particularly wanted to say thank you to Sid Pinder and to Tony uh, across the hall and also Joanne uh, Gottlieb. The guy with the uh, straggly beard also helps marketing our stuff. Really appreciate Jeff doing that. Um, the, what prompted me to come is um, on October the 12th, we used one of the, the beautiful Stevensville Middle School and Brian Kelly down there was very helpful for us, but um, it's supposed to be over at 8.30, so at quarter to 10, I said to um, Chuck Handy, Brittiana Emery, and Robert Hall, those are the people that keep that building looking nice, uh, I said, um, thank you guys for all you've done, because I know it was a pain for you. And they said, no, you, it was really great that you guys did this for the community, and now we just have to go do our regular work. Uh, which I thought was kind of poignant, uh, and I said to them, I am going to thank you, and they said, sure, and I said, no, I'm going to thank you in a public way. <laughs> so this was the most public I could think of. Uh, I did send a, a letter of thanking them down to Brian, uh, but I also wanted to thank you guys uh, in person. So thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Next on the li list is Richard McNeil. <coughs> Good evening, Richard McNeil, and uh, I'm making comments from two groups. Uh, one, the uh, Queen Ed's County Retired Educators Group, and then I'm going to make some comments about our mentor program. So, um, one, uh, I'd like to uh, take a moment to have a couple of our folks who are members to uh, introduce themselves. We got two fine. I'm uh, Madeline Hubbard, and I was computer technology specialist here um, until two years ago. I retired after 36 years. I am the webmaster for the Retirement Association and uh, do the newsletter. Sandy Hartman, I was with the board for 25 years in student support services, retired in 2014. Nice to see you all. Welcome. Thank you. We want to um, kind of introduce some of our members uh, on a regular basis so that um, not that you forget who we are, but, you know, we have a lot of folks who did a lot of service for the, for the community, and they still are. Uh, we had a wonderful luncheon and, uh, in October, and we had a nice presentation from the uh, county on a new program uh, that's getting started to help f uh, elderly folks not that I'm old, but uh, to take them to doctor's appointments, pick up prescriptions, that kind of thing. So it's in the interesting. What I want to do also is to, um, if you could take, this is a card. So if you know if you'd like to attend one of our meetings, uh, if you could let Jackie know, and maybe Jackie could let me know at least one week in advance that the dates are on the, uh, on the card there. Well, you're welcome to be a part of our, our group. We want you to know that we're still part of the community of educators and the, and the whole thing. Um, and Captain Kelly, I'd like to thank you for representing the board uh, at your legislative meetings. Uh, I have one on the 14th that we have an update on our pre-legislative issues that involve retirees. And uh, obviously what we're looking at is sustaining the uh, pension program and the funding of that. Uh, we all know that there's a big pile of money sitting there that the governor and and so forth kind of look at that money as kind of paying off some things. And um, we want to make sure that's sustained. I know that in the last two years, there's been some bills placed where uh, newcomers, new teachers in the system are being looked at as another way of uh, funding their retirement. And uh, we, as an organization and a state organization, don't think that's the way to go. So appreciate whatever you, you're doing on your end, and, and uh, we'll keep you up to date on our end. The, um, 
I want to thank uh, Dr. Kane for her message on Unity Day. I, I was at the high school in Queen Anne's when I, when I was a part of that and uh, appreciate the message you, you gave. Um, I think it was from Proverbs that you, you message uh, to the kids. A Chinese proverb. Chinese proverbs, right? And uh, to me, that's something that should be almost printed out uh, for everybody to, to, to be a part of. Uh, it was, I think it was well recepted there. I don't know whether you gave that same message at the other schools, but I, I happened to be there, and uh, I really thought that message uh, drove the point home for the Unity Day on that aspect. Um, also, in my role as a mentor, uh, I want to say that um, that the, the schools I visited, I visit five schools on a weekly basis working with first and second year teachers, and I have to say that I have been really impressed and pleased with the amount of instruction and the engagement that these new teachers are uh, putting into uh, with the students. Um, I know that teaching is a struggling uh, situation with a lot going on, uh, but the folks that I have uh, seem to be doing a great job. They're not perfect, uh, none of us are, but uh, they are easy to coach. Um, they listen, uh, they, uh, they cry sometimes when we're talking, they shed tears about those kids who aren't learning. They're passionate about them learning. And to me, that's, that's a big goal right there. Um, and I appreciate that, that program very much. Uh, and I'm sure all the rest of us who, who do that mentoring do that. So thank you very much. Um, I missed, I was right behind you all up at Sellersville. I was in one, one wing, and then I found out that you were in the other wing when I, when I shifted between classes, so it was in that. Um, just a reminder that uh, this Friday night is the, uh, you might say, the big football game between uh, Queen Anne's and Kent Island. Uh, both of them going into with an even record. Uh, the winner goes on and the loser goes home, so to speak. <laughs> so uh, I encourage everybody, maybe to, if you have the opportunity to come out and cheer for one of the teams or both of the teams. And Dr. Kane, you can be on one side for the first half and the second <laughs> half or be right in the middle of the field. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we have on our list at the time. If anybody would like to come up and, and speak that didn't see the list or wanted to. Please feel free. Seeing none, I believe we can move on. So we'll move on to our presentations. Dr. King, if you'd like to start at this time. Absolutely. We will start with Ms. Carla Pullen, and she's going to give us a brief update on the Graysonville edition. Good evening, Good Acting evening. President DiMaggio, members of the board, and Dr. Kane. My name is Carla Pullen. I'm the Facilities Planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools, and I'm here this evening for just a quick presentation, but I think it's a very good presentation. I'm going to give you an update on the status of the construction on the addition at Graysonville Elementary School. A few schedule highlights for you. Overall, our construction is currently progressing on schedule. By December, we anticipate that the playground will be back in use. We had hoped that this would happen sometime in November. We've had a few minor rain delays, and by the time they relocate the safety fence uh, back around the playground area, we think we're realistically looking at the beginning of December that the students will be back out there. Given that we continue to have good weather, that will still give them plenty of time to utilize the new space. We're still anticipating a January completion date for the kitchen addition. There is a possibility of a very minor delay with that as well due to some relocation of electric hookups that need to happen into the existing space. Um, and there are some electric issues, just very minor, that may also have us out of the music room space until March of 2018. However, currently those classes are in a portable classroom for the year, so it doesn't pose any issue to any of the instruction. We are still completely on target for completion of the project in August of 2018, 
and we are meeting uh, with the construction company every two weeks. I have a meeting scheduled with them tomorrow and we'll have a full update on schedule then again. This is September 20th. We've been working closely uh, to document the construction process through the use of one of the county's drones. And here you see a great shot of Graysonville Elementary School. This is the front entrance. And this was taken on September 20th. Work had not yet fully begun, but you can see that the safety fence was in place back here in the back. And we had the construction trailer hooked up. That's where they're currently located. And we have two project engineers on site full time. This is the rear playground on the 20th of September. They had just begun removal of the old swing set. You see there's some windows right here that had come out. And the existing playground structure was still in place at that time. Fast forward two weeks and my, what a difference it makes. The demolition of the play structure was just about complete. The items are being stored on site in containers that are being reused. These are steel supports that were holding the playground in place. They're in large concrete piers, six foot concrete piers had to come out of the ground there. And here you see some minor site grading that was completed. Fast forward to October 18th, footers for the addition had been dug, concrete was starting to be poured, and you can start to see the outline here of the classroom spaces. We have six classrooms. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then our common area. October 27th, this is a uh, shot of the kitchen area. We do have the footers that are starting to be poured for that location as well. And I'm gonna show you two photos that are hot off the press as of 2.30 today. This is the asphalt for the new basketball court. You can see a basketball hoop here and here, and this is part of the asphalt play area. There's gravel here that has been poured. They're getting ready to pour the flooring slabs for the classroom, so we'll have a floor in within the next few days for the addition. And here's just another view. They've installed the new swing set frame right in this area. So things are definitely moving along and moving along well. A Couple of other updates for you. Security. Whiting Turner, our contractor, has been very attentive to any issues with security. All of the workers that are on site have been fully cleared through a criminal background check. And once that background check happens, they're issued a Whiting Turner sticker that goes on their helmet. So you can look across the site and automatically determine that everyone's in compliance. There's a database of all of the contractors that are on site that's kept in that construction trailer at all times. So if we need to ask about uh, the viability of someone being there, it's right at our hands. Whiting Turner holds safety meetings with their entire crew every Monday morning just to go over plans for the week and to assure that all safety items have been met. They've been attentive. They've immediately addressed even the smallest issues. Last week they had someone that they felt was going a little bit too fast in the bus loop and they immediately corrected it. Whiting Turner holds their own internal unannounced safety checks, which I thought was very impressive. As an example, Internally, they had some of their staff come in and determine that the gravel that had been placed outside of the egress doors that we're using for emergency egress was probably not the best surface. So they had their crew go in, put down a plywood base because they thought that was much easier for a wheelchair or a walker in the event that there was an emergency. They even had them paint it so it was a better aesthetic and it just looked a little bit better outside of the school. There was an area on the construction site that had been blocked off with cones and safety tape around it. They made the determination on their own that that wasn't secure enough, so they had them re-secure with metal barriers instead. So that kind of internal check and balance process has been really impressive. And so far, we believe that all of the safety measures are fully in place and they're being strictly adhered to. Event parking. So parking is difficult at all of our schools. 
definitely during events, but construction brings another challenge to getting visitors parked safely at Graysonville. The administration has done a great job. They're staggering some of the events that they have, so where possible, they don't have all of the visitor traffic coming at one time. We've also gotten permission to use Bryan Methodist Church as overflow parking, which is right down the street. It's about a three minute walk from the school by sidewalk. So we feel that that's at least a safe option that we can offer to any of the visitors during large events during this time. And we're continuing to look at any issues to see if there are ways that we can alleviate some of the difficulty during the construction process. Whiting Turner staff, to date, we are extremely happy with the leadership at Whiting Turner and the project engineers that we have on site. They've received praise so far from the school administration. They're very quick to respond to even the smallest concerns that we have, and they're really, really respectful that they are working within the confines of an elementary school community. So I want to leave you with one last photo. This was the fall festival yesterday at Graysonville Elementary School. The staff and administrators all dress up for the Halloween parade as well, and the students look forward to seeing what their costumes are going to be. So the leadership team opted to be the construction crew, and they invited our two Whiting Turner engineers, which are right here on the end, to participate with them. And they were very happy to do so. So we're pleased the guys took a few minutes out of their day, and they were really visible to the students and staff during that time. The whole group danced to the YMCA song oh. and had the students up and participating with them. So we are really appreciative that the Whiting Turner staff is going above and beyond to be part of the Graysonville community yeah. while they're there in such an intrusive That's manner. Good. Yes. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I love the aerial views. Um, how did you come about being able to get that? So we were lucky enough to see a presentation done by the county government, Queen Anne's County government, when the courthouse, as the courthouse has been constructed, they have been <coughs> documenting the progress with one of their drones used for the planning department. And after contacting them, they were more than willing to help us out with the documentation of this as well. So they are coming out every two weeks to do a drone flyover, and it's really a neat process to watch. These machines are so smart. Um, but a big thanks to the county government for partnering with us on this because I think it, it gives you a visual of what's happening and how quickly it's happening. And you can't necessarily see that from the main road. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. So next we'll invite Mr. Adam Tolley forward so that he can provide us some information on our career and technology education programs. Mr. Tolley. All right. Good evening. Good evening. On my presentation quickly. And while Mr. Tolley uh, pulls up his presentation, if you don't mind, I was remiss in my um, community so. report. As I sat on the side of the road and Mr. Paluski took care of our <laughs> Teacher of the Year, Dr. Pearson came from that event and she sat with me on 695 in the dark with cars and trucks whizzing by to make sure that I was safe and took me to get a rental car that night. So might I acknowledge uh, <laughs> Dr. Pearson for doing that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. King. It was a shame you both have to miss it, but I'm glad you weren't alone. I was not. We had a driver from Queen Anne's County Bus Services that also drove some of us, and he jumped right up and offered to go and get her. But because of the way, you know, roadside assistant works and everything like that, she needed to be with her car when they arrived. And Di uh, oh, Mr. Wow. Paluski stepped right in and took everything over, but it was still a very sad day for us. I got a, I got a lot of text messages from people that were there saying, yeah. "Do I need to come and get you?" No, yeah. no, no. He, he, so he stepped right up to the plate and was ready to go. But yeah. you know, you have to kind of follow those guidelines when exactly. you have a tow truck coming. And we're so sorry for your first opportunity yeah. to be a superintendent in Queen in Maryland <laughs> and Queen Anne's County. But you know what? You'll be there next year. I will. I will. And we'll be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Are you doing the mic up here? Yeah, that was your son playing his game. I think
think we're all set. Good evening again, uh, members of the board. Thank you for having me here, and I'm delighted to give an overview of the CTE, Career Technology Education uh, Program here at, at uh, Queen Anne's County. And along the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and, and I will do my best to answer all of them. Um, so basically, I just wanted to give a general overview of CTE um, as it is here and as it is in the state of Maryland. It can become quite confusing when we start talking about CTE and the terminology that's used. Um, and so I try to break it down a little bit so um, everybody can understand, and that's, that's exactly what I did um, for myself to get started out, and it, uh, it was very helpful. So the state of Maryland has 10 career clusters um, that CTE is grouped into, and these are broad clusters of workforce um, areas. And I'm going to, as I go through the slide, you'll see, I'm going to give you an example of all the, I'll show you all the 10 clusters and then an example that I, that I broke down of one of our programs and one of the pathways um, that goes along to it. So here are the 10 career clusters, and this is what the entire state of Maryland uses. Um, in Queen Anne's County right now, we do have one, at least one program in all the 10 clusters, um, which, is, which is good. One of the examples that I have here that I broke down is our um, health and biosciences cluster. So that is the broad, the broad spectrum right there, and then it breaks down into program, and then the pathway, which, is the, which are the required courses for that program. So as you can see, I broke it down to the Academy of Health Professions. And then within that, the Academy of Health Professions, those are the four courses that a student would take to be a completer um, for the Academy of Health Professions. And this starts out, and, and most, most courses are similar in that the first course is a foundations course. It's the beginning course, and then it branches off into um, the more developed courses. So this example goes foundations, and then their structures and functions of the human body. The third course, uh, which is a concentrator course, which is where they, it, you can kind of think of it like um, in college when you start out with the, the gen ed requirements and then you move into your major. So it's, it's almost the same thing on, on a smaller scale. Um, and in this course in particular, the, the students take a certification exam for the state. Um, and then once they get done and pass the certification, they can either be certified as a CNA or a GNA. Uh, and then the fourth course is a capstone course where they actually you know, do a, a deeper dive into, into the profession. And you'll see in a second that we're adding another um, pathway into this course, um, which is a certified clinical medical assistant that will start off in the spring. So we are expanding here. So in Queen Anne's County, the programs are aligned with regional um, workforce needs. And uh, I'll go on to explain here shortly about the, the partnerships that we are um, developing and, and deepening with the economic uh, and workforce community here in Queen Anne's. Um, not all schools have programs in all the clusters. Uh, again, I, like I mentioned, we have at least one program in all the clusters. The handout that Mr. Uh, the handouts that Mr. Pluski gave to you, there are three papers there. The first two, the colored papers, are um, state brochures um, that come from the state. The third one is um, in response to a question that uh, Captain Kelly asked about the programs at each high school. So as you can see uh, on, that, on that handout, Queen Anne's County High School has five more programs in Kent Island, um, and these are more of the uh, trade-based programs um, that exist there. <coughs> So again, we, you know, the programs here are offered at both high schools, Kent Island and Queen Anne's. Um, together, both schools, we have 17 programs of study all together um, between the two high schools. And transportation is provided for students that are not able to take a program at their home school. They're able to attend um, the sister school and take the program there. One of the examples of that um, is our fire, fire science course that we have that is sponsored through MIFRI, which is the Maryland Fire Rescue Institute. And that um, is not offered on campus, it is offered at the Upper Shore Regional Training Center. So we have um, students that take that, there are 13 students in all that are taking this, this course right now. Um, and just with this <coughs> course in particular, so we have students from Kent Island that are bused down to go to the training center, which is you know, very close to Queen Anne's County High School. And then once they are, once they are finished, um, the program goes from about 9 to 12, and then they are, then they are bused back up to um, Kent Island. 
This course in particular um, doesn't cost the county anything. It is a, it's a program that's sponsored by the state. The only cost to the county is um, the bus that takes the students there. And um, they were not able to run this course last year due to enrollment, but we're going to try to keep this course going because it's, a, it's only a one-year course, and the benefit that the students get out of this particular course, um, you know, they're able to come out with several certifications with the state um, that they're able to to use in college or into um, to go straight into to the workforce. And I have a, a quick sample of a video that I'll show you um, in a second. So again, I mentioned that we're going to uh, expand in the Academy of Health Professions with a clinical medical assistant program. And then in the fall of 2018, we have a Homeland Security program that we are branching off into offering a GIS, which is Geographic Information System um, pathway dealing with maps. Um, and it's very, uh, very cutting edge. So it's very, very exciting that we're, that we're branching off into that. And we have um, partnered with Washington College. They have a very prestigious uh, GIS program. And so it's, it's very exciting. And we are looking into several options, bringing in, in speakers and doing several things with this program. So we're very, very excited. And, you know, while we're, while we're talking about that, just to kind of, kind of back up a little bit, when, you know, when we, when we talk about CTE and um, basically the, the branding that CTE has, and, and a lot of people, when you say CTE, they don't know what CTE is. CTE um, to them is the old VOTEC. And that's, we hear that, you know, very often as vocational, as VOTEC. Um, and it's really far from that. You know, we have grown leaps and bounds uh, in so many aspects. And, and we talk about, um, you know, our courses in the school and we talk about providing rigor. When you look at the courses that are offered in CTE and, you know, using the GIS example, I mean, we are talking perfect example of rigor. I mean, th these are things that the students are doing that, again, this is cutting edge technology and we are really preparing them um, to be ahead when they go out into the workforce or when they go to college. Um, and it's, it's, it's very exciting. So when I talk about the initiatives, one of the things um, that, you know, we want to do here as far as CTE goes is develop a good partnership with the business community. So far this year, um, the Economic Development Commission reached out to, to Dr. Kane and, and wanted to build this relationship between the school system and the business community. Um, and Dr. Kane went to the meeting and then um, the first meeting. And since then, we have been in contact with the Economic Development Commission. We have gone to the meetings. Um, they developed the subcommittee on workforce development, um, which I became a member of. So they are, the, the, the business community is very, very interested in partnering with the school system um, to, you know, work with our students. I mean, as they realize you, we have 7,700 students here, and, and these, are, these students are the future for our county. So they're very interested in that, hearing what we have to say, and then, and then us listening to what they have to say as far as what do they need from our students. So this is an ongoing um, relationship that we are having with them, very exciting relationship. We've also had meetings with um, Ms. Linda Friday from the Chamber of Commerce. They are excited as well to, to work with us. Um, they have offered to allow us use of their website as far as putting um, things on their website so we can market our CTE programs. Um, working with Chesapeake College, we have you know, work with them um, extensively so far this year. They are, they are very excited. Um, I think there's, you know, some new leadership there at the college. They're very excited to work with us, to hear what we have to say, to hear what our instructors have to say, and then you know, take, that, take that information and to build programs that are going to benefit our kids that, that articulate from high school to um, post-secondary education. Um, so, what I see, you know, as far as, you know, just my, my short time here in, in three months, and this is a, this is not just a Queen Anne's issue, it is a, it is a state issue. Um, I think we have to really do a better job of marketing our CTE programs and informing everybody of what CTE is and, you know, getting rid of this, the old mentality of that it's VOTEC and that if you go into VOTEC, then you're automatically going to be stuck in a certain area, and it's certainly not that. So, you know, we want to continue and, and build um, relationships with the business community, do a great job of marketing, um, educating parents as to what the CTE programs are and the benefits that, that come along. The benefits that students receive um, when they take these programs are 
are so numerous. I mean, when they come out, and you can pick any program, and when they come out, you can pick um, the auto tech program, and they come out and they become certified when they leave the auto tech program. Cosmetology is another, another great example, and the students that take the cosmetology program put in 1,500 hours of service where they go in and, and work, do clinical work. Um, when they come out, they have the same certification out of high school that a student would have if they went to Delmarva Beauty, Beauty Academy. $20,000 cost to go there, public high school free. Um, so the, the benefits really are, are boundless here. Um, so, you know, like I said, I just, you know, want to do all we can do to market these programs, to educate our parents, to educate even our educators um, that, that don't know that these programs even exist in the high schools, continue to work with our guidance counselors to, you know, share these programs with our students and, and to let them know, too, that, you know, CTE, and, and in Queen Anne's County, the, the state average for a, a student um, to do a dual completer, so they do a CT program and University of Maryland requirements. State average is just a little below 60%. In Queen Anne's County, we are above 85%. So we want to certainly maintain and raise that average if we can. And, and again, that's just another example of showing that CTE is not VOTEC and you're not sheltered or siloed in one area, that this is in conjunction with college and career and, and really um, certainly becoming college and, and career ready. <coughs> State average of what? I don't understand what Students who, who are dual completers. So if they, not looking at CTE, so a student that meets the University of Maryland graduation requirements, they have to have the 21 credits, um, two foreign languages. So they can choose that pathway, but a dual completer does both. So they complete those requirements, the 21 credits, as well as a pathway that they complete. So for example, the, the Academy of Health Professions pathway, they would do that in conjunction and they, then they become a dual completer. <coughs> <coughs> Any questions? Wow, that's very important. Great. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. And I'd be happy to come back, you know, anytime and, and share after we start to do some things and, and really get these initiatives um, in operation and just, you know, share with the, the benefits of that, that are out there for our students. Um, and it and really is. Uh, it really is exciting and I'm very excited to be part of it and to, you know, build those relationships and partnerships, you know, for our kids. The business community has been clamoring for this for a while and I'm delighted to see it's coming together. Definitely. Um, both of us working together to get it going. Definitely. They are very excited and, and like I said, it's the meetings that I've gone to, they have been very eager, um, you know, the businesses in, in the community have been very eager to talk to the school system and really make that connection because I think there has been a disconnect um, you know for whatever reason and and like I said we're going to do everything we can to make that connection and to expose um, you know our students and again our educators to what is out here in in the community and, and I have some plans um, in the uh, in the winter for January for professional development for our CTE teachers to expose them to the business community and and uh, again partner with the Chamber of Commerce they've they have agreed to to um, facilitate that for us, set up some time for us to go out to businesses and, and see what's going on and get an overview and listen to what um, listen to what the business owners have to say and, and what they're looking for and what we can do to prepare our students um, you know for that. So it's very very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to speak to you um, maybe afterwards or I'll send you an email because okay. I have a business that is very interested in being Great. a part of this program. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so Just and uh, if you could board. reach out to them okay. and um, they okay. They're very much looking forward to um, having the school system. Very good. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. Mr. Talley, I have yes, some question. On the, um, um, this, one of the issues I've, I've heard through the school, um, like Ken Island, if, if they go over to Queen Anne's to do, say, cosmetology, then they have to stay over there all day. They're basically Queen Anne's kids is that true because um, I think that's a deterrent for the kids that you know the Ken Island obviously the big rivalry between them some of them are not doing the programs because they are being required to stay over there so um, are there some of these pathways they come back and some of them they stay or is it, it there are and it, and it does depend on and what they are and the cosmetology is is a um, is an in-depth program and it's something it's there you know in my experience there's no perfect solution as far as CTE goes because we have some counties who have a separate career and technology center and that poses 
you know, there are pros and cons to that because it's almost the same problem where students um, leave their home school when they go to this, you know, um, technical center and then they're still apart. Um, and then in models like we have where we have the programs at the comprehensive high schools, you have issues of one, one school offering the program, one not, you know, based on facilities mm -hmm. or based on enrollment. So in that regard, you know, in all the, all the programs in the state face, face that issue. I was at a conference yesterday and Worcester County has a separate career and technology center and they were talking about some of the issues that they have with that and where um, it's, it's hard for the students because they want to be at their home school, but they still want to take part in the program for CTE. So there is, you know, like I said, there's no solution. perfect solution. Yeah. But we, you know, we try to do our best to accommodate the students and, you know, get them through the pathway that, you know, that they have chosen that they are interested in, and then, um, and then we take it from there. Well, I'm happy to see that so many of them are duplicated at both schools. Yes. You know, other than those trades, um, it's terrific. I mean, I only see a couple that are unique to one school or another. Definitely. And, and, and I didn't know it was that mm -hmm. good. So. Yes. Because I thought there was a lot more just trades at Queen Anne's, but sure. they've got a huge amount here Definitely. similar, which was ha I'm happy because we've been trying to have equity between the sure. two high schools mm -hmm. also. Um, I know the other thing is we run into is transportation costs for okay. moving them around like that. Correct. We do, we are talking about eventually with um, Ms. Poland here of doing a, an analysis of the schools and sure you know what if we got a CTE school between the two schools and Definitely. what is that necessary do we add additions to the other schools so that's all part of this sure. what would be something good I think if it was a between the two schools it would be a little less you know you'd have a little more opportunity to get them from one school right back to sure. the other one sure there's still that distance between the two high schools there is and, and again that's where that that relationship with the business community and looking at workforce development and seeing the needs in the county where that would really um guide you know something like that and and it would guide what programs you would offer um you know at a facility like that or even you know at the facility that we have now so and get the buy-in from the business is a great idea and they could advocate with us for some of these changes we might make i think so and i think that uh that would even probably um not to try to put the, the cart before the horse but i really think that they would provide financial assistance in certain in certain aspects to to build these programs um, because ultimately those these programs benefit them by producing you know students that are qualified to to become part of their business so and I, and I also agree with the communication piece because i don't know about miss george but um, my son was we were briefed a little going like going into high school and we had some briefings when he was in ninth my son's grade. not in high school yet so yeah, that's probably he, why okay but he's in, yeah. he still in that one year down but going into there they it, it's very confusing going to high school um, far this all these pathways go yes and um, so it'd be useful to be sure there's an understanding of that and Definitely. I think it's probably early when they go into freshman year uh, your son's not going into fre next year you'll you'll face this it's freshman when they yeah. jump into freshman year um, True. because some of this I think is not even clear to the to the students it's not I, I agree with you 100 percent and, and we really want to focus on the middle school years as well to promote these programs and i've had um extensive communication with uh jeff Strait and now dr pearson who's on board with us about creating some videos and, and i didn't want to take up too much time with, with the video that's there but you have access to it that that um that we did over at the uh, fire center last week and it's really crucial to to be able to put something together to show the students what actually goes on um, and so there are plans plans for that and there are also plans to have some of the students who are in the programs to talk to the middle school students and explain to them what they're doing the benefits you know that they receive because honestly and you know there's no better promotion than word of mouth and when the students hear it from another student it just makes it it makes that connection that real world connection from them um, it makes it so much better so we, we definitely have that in the in the short range plan you know for these programs thank you I have two questions um, thank you for do Dr. Kelly because that brought my question forward um, do we at this point introduce our eighth graders to this information yes from what I understand we do um, but I do want to expand upon that um, I want to be able to take the students to the schools to show them the programs and again really do this 
to be able to do this in-house marketing and, and showing some videos. And like I said, I've talked to to Jeff and Dr. Pearson, and what, what our what our plan is is to put together some videos of all the trades to show the kids that they can be shown in class during morning announcements, whenever, when it's, when it's time for the students to register. And we do have, um, in the middle schools, we have Project Lead the Way. It's a gateway program that, that leads into the high school. So they are familiar with that to an extent, but I really think, um, you know, just, you know, constantly showing them this and showing them the opportunities that exist and getting the students to come in and talk to them really is really is a key to promotion and again doing it in ninth grade because most of the most of the time the, the students don't start these programs until 10th grade so that's my next question yes well and i would think it would be very important to include the parents definitely I mean, johnny comes home and says hey i want to do this and the parents don't know anything about it sure they're likely to try to talk them out of it maybe an orientation so for parents and eighth graders going into ninth or ninth going into tenth whenever Definitely. they implement the program Definitely. to give the whole family an overview of sure. this opportunity and how it can be mixed with a pathway into traditional college as well. Sure. And do we not have any of these programs off-site? They're all either at one or the other high school. They don't go over to Chesapeake for any of this. It's all done in in house. Yes, ma'am. Except okay. for the the fire program, which is done at, at the fire facility okay. at the training. Center. Because I was not aware cosmetology was in house at this point. Definitely. Because I think many years ago it wasn't. Okay. But I could yep. be wrong. Yep. So it's definitely. Yep. At, it at always, always been. Okay. It always was at Queens County High School. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank okay. you so much. All right. Thank you. I just want to take two seconds and recognize Mr. Tolley for, for his leadership. He's been with us just three short months, and he has done a phenomenal job jumping in. He arrived in August and has wrapped his head around all of this. And one thing I, I not many people know about Mr. Tolley, that he practices what he preaches. He has been a volunteer fireman for a long time, rising to the level of chief uh, to serve his community. So he really understands the value uh, of these programs. And I think when kids see our, our supervisor that is also um, in a dual kind of career pathway, not that you're going to go take that as a full-time job, Mr. Tully. We need you here. Uh, I'm past my prime for, for that, so we're, we're okay. Thank you, Mr. Tully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to know. Thank, Thank you, you for Tully. your service. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Mr. Tully. Thank you. So, Mr. Farley. <coughs> He's going to share with us uh, what he's found for goal three, high quality workforce for our strategic plan. Thank you, Jackie. Good evening, Ms. DiMaggio, members of the board, Dr. Kane, executive team. My presentation will be pretty brief. Uh, oh, extremely brief. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I just want to share with you the, uh, the goals that we have for high quality workforce and where we stand with respect to those goals. So our goal was that 80% of our uh, new hires uh, are still with us after three years, and we're talking certificated folks. Um, presently we retain 76% of our new hires. And most of the, those folks leave because either they become disenchanted with teaching, maybe it wasn't what they thought it would be or they, it didn't work out for them, or they go back to their home state after a few years. But we do a pretty good job of growing and nurturing our new teachers. As you heard from you know, some folks earlier, we care a lot and they receive the support of their colleagues, I think, as well in helping them develop and deliver to their students. Uh, from then on, it really looks up. After five years, we, we do uh, retain 70% of our teachers, um, and 100% of our teachers get their professional certificate uh, within three years, and 10% of our certified position vacancies are filled by um, minority candidates. Now, I'm not sure uh, as we progress and reflect on, on our goals as a school district, if this is what our goals will look like in the future, but this is what they've been and this is where we stand for now. Oops, let me go back here.
Just Alt, click. left arrow. Alt, yep. left mm -hmm. arrow. Nope. There we go. So when it comes to diversity, this has been sort of the, the flight path of improving diversity among our certificated folks. Uh, we're holding our own right now. We really do want to do, do better because it improves um, access for all people within our school district when our teachers, when our paras, when all of our people um, support and look like the people who work around them and, um, and it, it makes it better for everybody. So, um, you know, not only access to language, but access to people of all kind, whether it's disability or it's, or it's race or, you know, what it, whatever it is. So uh, I know that just as we did on Unity Day, we celebrated being one, that we will continue to do that and we will work together to make our place one and that our people, our staff, our teachers will continue to look like our students and we'll enjoy the success together. So uh, any questions about that brief presentation? <laughs> I, I do have one. Uh, yes. The standard, we're sitting at the 10% for minority. I mean, is that is that based on the number of minorities we have in our county. I mean, that's always been a problem. I mean, we go to 10% of what? It's 10% of the hired. And where does yeah, it come 10 from? 10% of the hired staff. Well, I, you know, I, honestly, I've only been here a year, and I, I didn't create the goal. Mm -hmm. But I would say that it is an awful lot of things in a complex um, environment and that we, we can do better by creating resources to identify, recruit, and welcome people, um, and to, um, you know, and to continue to create an environment that retains them. Uh, so that's not an easy answer. Right, I, I mean, we don't, I, I'm not criticized. I'm, what I'm saying is, where does the number 10% Obviously, okay, we've met it for a couple of years. We, we I, don't stop. I mean, oh, I don't think what, it's what, <laughs> where did that number, you don't know where the number came from, so no, you're reevaluating I, I, I that. I don't. I think all of our numbers need to be reassessed okay, now at great. the two-year mark. Yes, I do. Great, because I didn't know if they're compared to, and the other thing is just the standards and goals you have, are they compared to other districts, other states, the, the country, the, the international? I mean, we, that's we, the kind of stuff I think. I have yeah. a new boss, and I'm pretty sure she's going to have a new idea. Right. <laughs> well, mostly, yeah. You can count on that. It would be nice yeah. to have a, what it's based on. Yeah. So if there are no other questions, I want to thank you. If there are, I'll sit here and answer them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Farley. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Landgraf? Okay, the next item on the agenda is the expenditure report. Um, this is the standard monthly expenditure report that you get. Uh, expenditure report number one is the 30,000 foot view, which gives you all the categories and how we're spending within those categories. And then um, report number two is the 10,000 foot view, which gives you a little more detail. Um, there's two items at this point in time that um, I want to point out to you, under special education, you'll notice under um, transfers. These are transfers for tuition for non-public placement students. These are um, special ed students that can't be serviced in our um, schools, so they go to a non-public placement. And we have six of those students, and the average tuition that we have to pay is about $80,000 a year. Um, so. That's going to be an issue. We are going to see, you're going to see a transfer later where we've moved money to cover most of this cost. Um, the remainder that's still showing as a deficit here will be covered by additional state funding that we'll be able to receive for these students. And then Because we're short or just as a standard process? As anyway? a standard process. There's a formula that they use. Um, we have to pay so much and then they chip in and because some of these tuitions are very high they'll be chipping in a larger percentage um, than they have in the past so that should be covered and then the second area is under student transportation and right now we're still in a good place but under salaries and wages because of these same students um, we have quite a few people who are driving to 
the Baltimore area on a daily basis taking students to school and because they're in the Baltimore area they're staying there rather than driving the bus back and then having to you know turn right around and drive back to pick the student up they're staying there so we're running into an overtime <coughs> situation with a lot of these folks so I'm keeping a very close eye on that line item um, but I do anticipate by the end of the year we're going to be looking at having to transfer some funds there question those those buses though are the count are our buses I'm just they saying, are, are we looking buses. at alternatives to that like part-time if we're we're paying these people full-time and do we maybe a part-time person that could just be up there and sit there or I, I don't know if we're looking for alternatives we're just running into a big bill obviously for right well because of the number of hours that they would be working mm -hmm. um, part-time versus uh, full-time we'd still end up paying them the overtime because the overtime that. is what time and a half right or something right. I just wondered if we were looking at something and, and I can tell you it is pretty tough finding drivers as it is um, we we run a bit of a deficit so we're constantly advertising so it's difficult to find drivers so it, it takes a, a quite a while sometimes an hour a little over an hour to get um, some of the students to where they need to be and to drive another hour or so back and sit for about two or three hours and then go back for an hour and you know what I mean it just is um, it's not a good use of that bus or, or the driver I, I'd like to point out to the general public too they may all attend a different facility absolutely we're not all going to the same part place of the state definitely um, they may ride in a car they may ride in a handicapped bus uh, mm -hmm. van mm -hmm. um, we still have to have a dedicated driver for each one of our students that need this service regardless of where they're being taken required by and law. then I think the most important thing is to make sure that we make it as easy on our driver as we can, but that he is there to fill the needs for that particular student. That's all part of this whole process, and a lot of people just do not understand that this is our required obligation, and as a system, we welcome it, and we take it on happily because it's what we do best. And we can't just put them all on the same bus and ask one student to ride for five hours and another one gets dropped in one and then reverse it all again. I mean, I know our regular students go a fairly long distance on a bus, but nothing like, like this. And that's where I think we have that disconnect with the community. These children's services are being met for various reasons and it's a very broad spectrum um, and th th there's no again magic solution it, it, it's almost an individualized um, plan you, for each one. You are absolutely right and once the IEP team has determined that there is a facility that can meet the needs of an individual child then it is our responsibility by law and because we know it's the right thing to do to go ahead and provide those services and transportation comes along wow. with that. Absolutely, absolutely. Good. Another thing, uh, Ms. Landgraf, we've got 87.75% total that we've used to date and we're only a quarter into the year. Am I looking at something right. wrong? And it, no, you're correct. But if you look at the, in the middle column, it's called encumbrances. Mm -hmm. And essentially what that is doing, that's a $61 million item there. And essentially what the system does is all of the salaries for all of our full-time people, it encumbers them at the beginning of the year. For the whole year? For the whole okay. year. Okay. So, that's what I thought. <laughs> so yes, you. don't be excited that okay. we're only a third like of the that. way through the year and we've already spent you know, most of our budget. Okay. Are there any other questions on the expenditure report? I don't have any. Uh -uh. Uh, thank you very much. All right, so uh, good evening once again, um, Mr. Maggio, Ms. George, and our fellow board members. I, I'd like to just share with you a precursor, if you will, of how we plan to gather some information from our community about the budget. So as we quickly approach budget season, we're making preparations. In previous years, the uh, school district has had town hall meetings and it seems to me from feedback uh, from multiple people that they have been less and less um, 
you know, heavily attended. And so I believe last year we probably had a total of three or four uh, people who showed up and sometimes none. So we don't want to repeat that. So our goal is to gather as much information as we can from the public. So this year we're going to try a survey. So we're going to put the survey out for families and our community to complete so that they can share with us a bit of information about what they deem to be priorities in terms of the budget. So what you're looking at is, um, is the survey exactly that we will send out and we're asking for for input. So we categorize some of the areas where we ask for input with regard to academics and we give uh, some choices and of course we always say uh, if there's another um, uh, category or other thing that they would like to, to request then we give them the opportunity to do that. We talk about whether you know their opinion or, or if they would set a priority in terms of competitive salaries, classroom technology, textbooks, uh, after school programs, renovations to buildings and, and aging facilities, that sort of thing. And then, of course, we go on to talk about the different kinds of academic programs we have, if they would rate excellent, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, um, our English language arts, world languages. You can see the list all the way from music to tech ed, uh, library media. And, um, and, of course, we give, again, an opportunity for families or whoever is completing the survey respondents to say, anything else that they like to say about any of those programs. We ask if they would go ahead and rank several other um, areas that certainly impact the budget, having to do with more instructional materials um, and technology devices, academic interventions, all of those opportunities for families and, and our respondents to say what they think about those and, and how they rate them. Information about school bus safety and efficiency is there, health services, school counseling services, extracurricular programs, athletic programs, our Anchor Points Academy, every opportunity we We'd like to give. And again, a nice big space here for families and respondents to say whatever it is that they'd like to say about any additional supplemental programs that they would like to see Queen Anne's County Public School offer. So there are lots of opportunities um, for families to say, you know, how they think we fare in these areas and what they think we ought to prioritize or how they think we ought to prioritize um, these areas for funding um, for 18-19 school year. So I just wanted to share this with you so that you could have a look at it. And of course, if there are any areas, once you've had a chance to digest this, if there are any areas that you believe we have left off, then please let us know. Or any comments or suggestions that you might have, we are certainly open to. Because our goal is, if we're not going to get people to come face to face, we've got to get the information some type of way. And I know that uh, a survey was administered last year. It might have been fairly close to the time time uh, when um, budget was going to be struck, so we may not have gotten as much um as many respondents as we plan to, but since we're pretty early in the process, we figure we'll leave it open for a long period of time, and if we need to open that survey back up, if we haven't gotten enough responses, then we'll do that. But we really do want to get a feel for what the community uh, deems priorities for the budget. What kind of rollout date are we looking at? What, uh, Tomorrow or as soon oh, as you say go. Yesterday? <laughs> yesterday? As soon as you say go. Yeah. Great. Now, I have a couple concerns. Mm -hmm. Is this only going to be available online? We can offer paper pencil because we know that we have some areas that do not get um, good uh, reception. And what we'll also do is we'll speak to principals because we have some um, time, you know, after school where families may be able to come into computer labs and complete a survey online um, at the school. So if they're there and they can do it, then we'd like to get their input wherever they can get it. It would be good to offer that at parent-teacher conferences. At Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Advertise it there if they can't. They, they need can to come know. Into yeah. The, to the yeah. And, and provide that paper it. pencil for them that at that time also, as well. Either yeah. or. Right. Mm -hmm. Either option. And the internet issue isn't significant to one area of the county in the sense that there are lots of people in the county who can't even afford it. Mm -hmm. Now, it is significant to areas as far as not getting service. Yeah. But we have um, equal communities throughout the county of parents in need who cannot have this luxury. Absolutely. So they need to know it's there. They should input, fill it out, 
get it in because that's where their student funding's coming yes. from. Yes. I think okay. the communication Excellent. that's a big communication thing for our I can tell you to get that going to the whole county. Absolutely. Can we get input from the business community too on Absolutely. That? Yeah, that's where I mean we could really go all out. Widespread. There is a question at the beginning that asks whether or not they have a child in our school system, and it matters not because if they live in Queen Anne's County, then this is important to them. Sure. Is, is there a way that, um, I mean, do you take the, do you log on and take the survey once, or can, no, I don't want a skewed survey, so well, yeah, you may so have people taking it 42 times. Right. What happens, and, and we'll be able to, as we move forward with our communications office and the way we're able to do surveys, when I've used survey um, companies in the past that will track that computer number, and so they'll say, you know, while we don't need to know who you are, if you've got 15, and it's not in a computer lab, if you've got 15 people responding, it automatically kicks out all but one. Uh, okay. from the same location so we can say these are the numbers associated with these computers in our schools and if we've opened up the schools they track that and so you would expect multiple times on a computer but from a home computer or a computer that is not part of our system you would not expect to see 20 or 30 uh, responses from the same computer. But you might get more than one because you're going to you, have you, mom you, you and may. dad in a split family. You may. Um, is there any way we can just I don't know, I've taken surveys anonymously online many times that that's it, one time. Mm -hmm. You try to go in, it's linked to your email, but the survey company doesn't know I filled it out, <laughs> but that's what kicks me out next time from trying to duplicate it. Mm -hmm. Some way we could do that. And, and that is the benefit of um, going with a company to do it. Uh, this time we did not have that funding to go with a company, so we're going to have to do this ourselves. Absolutely. And so we're, mm -hmm. we're going to, our, our goal is just to get people to pay attention to it and participate in it this right. year. It's going to be new, we're going to advertise heavily, but we really want to get responses. Yeah. Um, and if, and if we get something like that, if that comes forward, then of course we'll deal with that. I'm, I'm not so concerned about that at this point because participation has not been um, heavy. Anyway, this, exactly. no matter what we've so done. We exactly. So <laughs> we just yeah. want people to respond. Yeah. I'm a little concerned too about the pre-K kindergarten category because unfortunately we don't have universal pre-K. Yeah. So, you know, any parent who really has a big problem with that, that's going to be a completely different um, answer to the survey than what we actually do offer in the way of pre-K when they do qualify for it. So th maybe we should separate those two things. And, you, and, we, and we certainly can do that as we tease out the responses, yeah. but it's still a good point for it us is. to know we it can is. use that and say our families want or our families are advocating yes, for exactly. in mass. Because they'll so get kindergarten. We all, correct. you know, that's, that's but pre -K, mandatory. That mm -hmm, pre-K mm -hmm. gap that I've been crying for universal and education. and right now what so we're everyone what we're doing is we're having uh, mr. Pender in his office to do an assessment of location of space available for that because that is going to so be the next good. issue yeah. that we have to deal with so say we get some funding where are we going to put our children and we'll get a report eventually absolutely on, um, what kind of um, responses we've gotten yes from the community, yes. great, like a percentage of people yes. who did, didn't, how many places it went out, how we advertised it, yep. Beverly is correct. I think Jen's idea is great too, parent-teacher conferences mm -hmm. throughout the business community, get that word out there, get it in the newspaper, even though a lot of people don't read it. Somebody does, it'll tell somebody, that'll tell somebody. Yep. It's really important we get our funding this year. Yes, exclamation point, exclamation point, <laughs> underline. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think right in the beginning we should be careful. I mean, be we want to open it to, like I said, the business, and maybe they don't have kids. I don't know if we have a zero on here, but one of the other questions would be, have, have you ever had a child in the system? Because we have a lot of parents that don't have many more, but they still want to input to what's going on with it. I don't know if we could use the information. We, we, can, we can add that. Kind of we, we can add that. Or do you have them? attending or have to have attended or mm -hmm. something like that yep we can add that it's just going to be just be two different categories anyway be hard so, yeah. To, yeah look through this and see how we call out because there we are we've got that universal pre-k 
we can use some of that data for fighting for universal pre-K. Yeah. <laughs> Not just our funding. I mean, there's you mean a lot if of there things. was a question about it? No, if they if they if they called they in, made like a comment. she said, but but the whole state wants it, and the whole that. state is denied. That's the, such a right. problem. It's not but it's good to have that information. It is. It is. And to prepare our funders that someday they may be responsible for mm -hmm. funding universal pre-K, just so we don't forget. We don't have that right now. Right. This is a great, um, I think it might be more useful because the, uh, the hearings just, you know, the, I noticed you, we canceled those. Yeah, and they we, we, we took a, a while to so do that because we just wanted to be sure that we were doing the right thing. But if we're not getting folks to come, then we're not getting any information at all. So other questions? Great. Okay, so we will add that piece that you said, Ms. Um, Kelly, Captain Kelly, and uh, make sure that we get information about whether or not they have ever. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. King. Okay, at this time, uh, board members, would you like to take a 15 minute break? I'm good. I'm good. Are we almost done? Almost, yeah. yeah, we're almost done. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on. We're going to move on to current action items. Uh, first being the 8.01 HR report. May I have a motion to approve the HR, HR report as presented? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. In category, thank you. <laughs> in category transfer letter, may I have a motion to approve the in category transfer letter as presented? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Transportation report, substitute bus drivers. I'll pitch it for uh, Mr. Pender. Okay. This is just to uh, seek the board's approval on the substitute bus drivers that are listed. Make a motion that we accept the substitute bus drivers as listed. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. And we'll move on to 8.04 field trip. Queen Anne's County High School concert, symphonic and marching band to Disney performing arts live on stage in Orlando, Florida on March 25th, 19, or 19, 2018 to March 31st, 2018. Next is a field trip. May I have a motion? Field trip. May I have a motion? <laughs> I don't, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. To me. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the Queen Anne's County High School concert, symphonic, and marching band trip to Disney Performing Arts in Orlando, Florida, Florida, on March 3rd through March 31st in 2018. March 25th. March what did I say? March, March 3rd. 3rd. Oh my You're gosh! I know I'm for a month. Check that. Do you want to go on that trip, Mr. Farley? <laughs> 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 Sorry about Robin that. Robin might have to go with the checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> Keep their numbers. Okay, one more time. March 25th through March 31st, 2018. So move. Oh. <laughs> I'll second. All in favor yeah, say. I have, a, I have a question on that for, for discussion. Um, the, we have, it's $900 a student. Now, <clears throat> I know it mentioned in here when they have a problem, they'll come to them and say we can't pay for that. What kind of um, what kind of what kind of parameters do we have like to be consistent and fair? Because there may be people that could afford it, yeah. but come to you and say, "Hey, we can't afford it." I mean, or people that get jealous because somebody's getting the whole thing paid for and they haven't done it. So, what do we use for? So I can tell you, yet? Mr. P is going to um, respond to that. But there have been um, fundraisers that have happened for that trip. So, Mr. P. Absolutely. So there are. Uh, I spoke with Mr. Wright, who is the uh, band um, 
band teacher. Uh, the band teacher, thank you. And uh, that was the first question that we asked even before that it would even come to the board. Uh, so one, they're doing a variety of fundraisers and if there is any instant in which a student cannot afford the $900, there are ways within the booster club that they ensure that the child has the opportunity to go. PTS, they all should the, probably and, also. And, and the, <coughs> yes, that's How correct. How close do they get to doing funding for the whole thing? I mean, they're doing a lot of fundraisers. Mm -hmm. It, it's my understanding that they have been very successful, and as you know, the Queens County High School has a very, very strong uh, uh, band booster. Uh, you know, this this is a big trip, there's no doubt, but they do a variety of, of other performances locally, um, and, and and as I've investigated it, I don't see that, uh, that that's going to be an issue. Uh, all students are going to have the opportunity to go. It's also something that he plans for every so many years so he can project when their trip is and how to, to delegate that fundraising over years, not just It's not month. correct. That's correct. That's a good point. Thank you, Ms. George. And so the they band make it well Boosters known. is their main fundraising group. Yes. They have several events yes. dedicated strictly to this trip. Right. That's what the event says. In order to send the band to Correct. this performance, Correct. we are having this golf tournament or we are having Yeah, this. it's it's very well yeah. publicized and, yeah. and this work has been ongoing. Uh, so have they ever come to us for a shortfall? Do we no. Know? There we uh, there's, there has never been a request that has hit um, certainly my desk as on behalf of the superintendent to say, we, we can't fund it. They know that if that is an issue to, to contact us um, and to ensure that you know, there's equity. And I was going to say, so hopefully we can rest assured no one gets left out. Absolutely. Financial Absolutely. Reasons. Absolutely. And what, all, what a great opportunity. And they've all been, no, all the pa families have been notified that this is available if they can't afford yes. it. Yes. Okay. And I will even go on to say that uh, we ensure in every one of our field trips that every student has the opportunity to go. Right. This right. one is just a big. It is. It, there's, there's no question. Okay. But I just want to be clear that that what level uh, of detail that we're asking that question to schools. And remember, before it even gets to me, before I even recommend it to the superintendent, I have a variety of supervisors that are asking those same questions and principals that are asking those same questions. So. Uh, and they've already developed a plan, usually, as how they're going to do right. this for that's right. these students. And that's a from a year to year thing, yes. too. Yes. He knew last year what he was doing this exactly. year. Oh. Exactly. As did boosters. Mm -hmm. So now we have to vote. Oh, we have a motion. Yeah. The motion's on the table. It's already so on the table. Vote. So we need to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The eyes have it. We move on to 8.05 policy school improvement. This is for the final read. This policy was tabled during the October 4th board meeting to allow us time to review the policy. Mr. Farley, were there any comments on this no, policy? No, there were not. Board members, does anyone have any comments on this policy? No. No? No? Captain Kelly? <coughs> May I have a motion to approve the school improvement policy as presented? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. At this time, we will move on to the 8.606. Opinion of the Open Meetings Compliance Board meeting of the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County. Maryland's Open Meeting Act is a statute that requires many state and local public bodies to hold their meetings in public, to give the public adequate notice of those meetings, and to allow the public to inspect meeting minutes. The Act also permits public bodies to discuss some topics confidential, confidentially with proper documentation. 
The Act's central goals are to increase the public's faith in government, ensure the accountability of government to the public, and enhance the public's ability to participate effectively in our democracy. Members of the public bodies are supposed to be familiar with the Act's requirements, and recent legislation has increased opportunities for training. Under this law, there is a three-member Open Meetings Compliance Board, which issues advisory opinions in response to written complaints about alleged violations of the Act. Although the Compliance Board is not part of the Office of the Attorney General, citizens can find a lot of excellent, excellent and detailed information about the law on the Attorney General's website. This includes copies of the Compliance Board's opinions, while the opinions of the Compliance Board are only advisory and has no authority to impose penalties, they offer guidance to help public officials improve their open meetings practice. Along these lines, a complaint was lodged in August of 2017 alleging that during certain meetings in late 2016 and early 2017, the Board of Education had committed various violations of the Act. In an opinion issued on October 31, 2017, the Compliance Board found in the Board's favor on some claims but did find violations on others. In particular, the opinion notes procedural violations of the Act's requirements regarding the contents of written closing statements and the scope of closed session discussions, and provides further guidance on the contents of closed session summaries. By law, we are required to announce this to the public and provide a summary of the opinion. The Compliance Board concluded that for some meetings during the time period reviewed, the Board's closing statements were repaired as required but did not contain sufficient detail about the topics and statu statutory references covered. The Board also found that some of the topics discussed in closed sessions, such as proposed policy changes, did not fit within the 14 statu statutory exceptions or an in incorrect exception was noted on the form. In most incidents, one once the agenda errors were realized, the topics were tabled until a future public session. However, as the Compliance Board ob observed, even where the discussion strays beyond the recognized exceptions only briefly, this can result in a violation. We should note that in the months since those situations occurred, the Board has continued to improve its practices with respect to going into and conducting the closed portions of this meeting. Lastly, the Compliance Board credited us for regularly preparing and publishing accurate summaries of our closed sessions. Nevertheless, the Board cautioned vigilance in making sure that our post-session summaries are consistent with the pre-closing statements. If anyone is interested in reviewing the full opinion, it can be found on the Attorney General's website listed as 11 OMCB Opinion 59 2017. Please note that this board takes its open meetings obligations seriously. Over the past year, we believe we have improved our procedures and practices and that our public notices, our web-based content, our video services all support an open, inviting, and accessible forum for governing our school system. At the same time, we will keep improving by updating our forms and other technical details participating in training and listening to your suggestions. Thank you. At this time, we will move on to 9.01 policy, use of nalazone or other overdose, overdose reversing medications. This is for the first read. We have one policy for the first read. May I have a motion to allow this policy to go to our stakeholders and be placed on our website for the first read? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. At and, this, and oh, I'm go ahead. Sure. Did you say the name of that policy? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. All right, okay, yes. thank you. Um, Sharon? Um, at this time, we have time for citizen participation again. If anyone is like to, would like to come forward and speak um, about what's on your mind, please feel free. Uh, we don't have anyone signed up, but anyone can join us. Would anyone like to speak? All right, well, we're going to move on to our future meetings and events. 
On November 15th, there will be a board work session. On November 21st, the superintendent's art gallery. And on December 6th uh, will be our next uh, monthly board meeting. Um, at this time, I guess we're going to adjourn. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Good night and thank you. Mm -hmm.